just lift up your hand before heaven and give God thanks that you are a child of God, that you are no longer a slave, a slave to sin, a slave to sickness, no longer a slave to diseases. Just appreciate the Lord this morning for his goodness, for his mercies, for his faithfulness, having delivered us and made us free. Free from the element. Free from the element. Free from death and destruction. Just give him praise, give him glory. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, Lord Jesus, thank you. For all that you have done for me. And you continue to do for me. I am grateful to you. I am grateful to you and I appreciate you thank you for loving me and I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I love you Jesus he is the sweetest he is the best to love I'm telling you the truth the best person to love is Jesus. The best person to give your heart to is Jesus. He said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May somebody give his heart or her heart to Jesus today. Amen. May somebody, maybe you have given him part of you today as you are in God's presence, change your heart and give all to him. Give all your heart to him. No one else is qualified to have your heart. No one else, believe me. Some people say, what about my husband? Yes, it's your husband. You are one in flesh. <laughs> Amen? But your heart belongs to your maker. Your heart does not belong to your husband. Your heart does not belong to your wife. And the reason why people have heart attack and heartbreak is that they put their heart in the wrong place. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is the cure for heart attack? What is the cure for heartbreak? Put it in a place where it can never break. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Say my heart. Is with, with Jesus. And I love that. I love and I love that. I love it means that nothing anybody will do will break it. Because it's not with you. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just love him. I just love that wonderful name. There is none like him. May he be your best. Amen. No, you didn't hear me. May Jesus be your best. Amen. May he be your utmost. Amen. Ah. Jesus, precious Jesus. I love your name. I love your name. Jesus, precious Jesus. There is no
for the last time. everywhere lift up your hand wherever you are close your eyes wherever you are right now in the micro church online this moment observe a moment of silence before Jesus before Jesus and I'm going to ask you to do something very simple this morning Call upon the name of Jesus three times and ask him to touch you today. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Call upon the name. I don't know what you need. A healing. A miracle. A support. Favor. Now, you have come to him that is able to do all things. I just want you to lift up your hand. And that is the problem also. Many people are not lifting their hand. They are looking around and they are hearing the word of God and they will not even obey it in church. And then they leave the church worse than they came. And I said to you, very simple, lift up your hand. Close your eyes. Call upon Jesus three times and ask him to help you this morning. And whatever that need be, as you call upon him, may he answer you. May, you answer, may he answer you. Amen. May Jesus answer you. Amen. Jesus. 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 Touch me today. Touch me today. Touch me today. With your power. With your spirit. With your grace. Lord Jesus, touch me today. Lift up your hand, close your eyes. He is touching somebody. He is touching somebody. Lord, in your fullness and in your power. In your fullness, Lord, and in your power. Lord, like a river of fire. Lord, we ask you like a river of fire that there will be a penetration even into our hearts of your very presence, of your very presence and of your power, miracle power, miracle power. And I said to you today, you are healed. And I said to you today, you are delivered. Yeah. And I said to you, the Egyptian that troubled you, they are gone. Yeah. Take the miracle. Yeah. I said to you, it is your day. Yeah. It is your day. Yeah. To every one of you listening to the word of God, I declare that salvation has come to you. Yeah. I declare that salvation has come to you. Yeah. You are delivered from that trouble. Yeah. You are delivered from that pain. Yeah. That affliction. Yeah. I command it to die. It is written upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. As it is written, let there be a diplomacy in your life this morning. Yeah. That which is written, I command it to become a reality in your life. Yeah. Now, now, 
Now, power. Power of the Holy Ghost. 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 Flowing like a river. Flowing. 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 Flowing like a river. Flowing like a river. Now. 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 Those bound by demons. Those bound by demons. I stand on this altar of Jehovah. And I invoke the power of the blood over you this morning. All those bound by demonic forces, demonic oppression, poverty stricken oppression. This morning, I come to you as a servant of the Most High God to deliver you out of that captivity, to break that bondage, to destroy the yoke of the enemy. Now, now, I release the blood of Jesus over you. By the blood be released. Uh, by the blood be released. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh. Affliction shall not arise. Shall not arise a second time. You have come to his presence to be set free. And I demand your freedom by the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever that has been a trouble today, we bring peace to you. And those that trouble you, we come under God's judgment. Those that trouble you. It is written, it is a good thing. For the Lord to send tribulations to those that trouble you. According to the word, may God's tribulation locate those that trouble you. Today, 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 I say today, I say today, everything that troubles you, all those that troubles you, according to the word of the Lord, I send tribulations to them. As it is written, so shall it be. In the name Oh, Jesus Christ. Amen. You will come into your miracle this season. You will come into your miracle this season. By the power of the Holy Ghost, sir. You will come into your miracle. Before the end of this year, you will testify. Before the end of this year, as the Lord liveth, you will testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Take ownership of that prophecy and declare I must be the one to testify. Go ahead, declare it. Go ahead, declare it. Go ahead, declare it. I must be the one to testify. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus precious name Amen. God's people please take your seat wherever you are in the micro church online a very special welcome to each and every one of you and I want you to know that the blood of Jesus has spoken for you Amen. the blood has spoken your freedom Amen. the blood has spoken your liberty Amen. no one can resist when the blood has spoken and therefore, welcome to a life of liberty Amen. and of dominion. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Many of you do not know what liberty and dominion means, but we get to that one day. Liberty and dominion means when others cannot go, you go. <laughs> when others cannot move, you move. You know why? Because there is one on the inside of you. 
Praise the Lord. It means that when kidnappers kidnap you, you get all of them born again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We get all of them born again. I started a prayer meeting in their kidnapping camp. He said, now shall we lift up our eyes and praise the Lord? He said, shut up. He said, no, 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 no. You keep quiet while I'm talking to the Lord. Join me in prayers. And before 24 hours, you comfort all of them. God is looking up to us to do that. We will do that in Jesus' mighty name. Kidnap the kidnappers. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Kidnap the... Sunday morning they are in church with you. They say, how did this sound broken? They kidnapped me and, and I kidnapped them. And they are all born again. It will happen in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> These things are possible with God. But when fear takes the place of faith, defeat is inevitable. Simple. Simple. When fear takes the place of faith, defeat is inevitable. You need to know. Like we heard from the devotional, where mommy was sharing, your word is your tomorrow. If you speak defeat, you will be defeated. I am very careful about my word because I know that my word is powerful. Whether I play, or whether I laugh, or whether I study, I am careful with my word because I know that my word carry power. And so if you have AK-47, you are very careful. Praise the Lord. Okay, many of you may not know AK-47. If you carry double barrel, everybody knows a gun called double barrel, right? Okay, if you carry a gun, you have to be very careful. Let's make it like that. Amen. The problem is that your tongue is more powerful than the gun. Because gun only destroys, but your tongue can destroy and recreate. That is why your tongue is more powerful than machine gun. Machine gun is only built to destroy only built to kill but your tongue ah life and death is what it carries so you need to be careful how you use it amen so you need to be careful how you use your tongue this your tongue it can be the reason why you are the way you are you pray and pray god will bless you a day later you are speaking negative things you are speaking death and destruction you think it's a joke. Even when you joke, don't joke with your words. Because, listen, Jesus said you will give an account of every word. Not some word, every word. Even when you joke, don't joke with what comes out of your mouth. Because at the end of the day, you can become a joker. And your life will be full of joke. Because that's all you have ever been. Please. Please, I have a message called, your tongue is your harvest. Your tongue is your harvest. When am I alone? When I'm alone, I am speaking power into my tomorrow. When I'm alone. When I'm with people, I am sharing power into their destinies. Praise the Lord. I have not found a way to be depressed in all my life. Amen? I have now found a way. You say you are depressed. Depressed of what? What will depress you? When I'm oppressing the enemy. Praise the Lord. You know, some mattress, right? When you press them, press them, when you depress them, it goes down, right? And then when you take, remove your hand, what happens? It comes up. When you depress it again, it comes up, isn't it? But there are some mattresses that when you press, they don't move. <laughs> Amen? 
It's called orthopedic. Amen. When you press it, your hand will pain you. And so Christians are meant to be like orthopedic mattress. When you press us, we depress you. Is somebody hearing me? When you press a Christian, the Christian will depress you. My, my little boy will jump on my bed. And I will tell him, I said, Enoch, watch, watch, the, watch yourself, your head on the bed. Because you can't spoil the bed. Do you understand? You can't break the bed. But I don't want the bed to break you. So I will tell him, be careful when you are jumping. Praise the Lord. Other matras, he will jump and bounce up. This one, you fall. You said my head, daddy. And I pray. And so, your life should be like orthopedic mattress. Press me, I depress you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ushers, monitor those that are this that are sleeping. I think they are so comfortable they are sleeping. Praise the Lord. All the ushers should be on your feet. It is also the plot of the enemy to make people sleep when the word of God is coming. And so they come and go, they stay the same. Amen. Amen. So all ushers should be on active duty this morning. Active duty. Praise the Lord. Today, I've already preached. If you got what I said in the last 10 minutes, you're already blessed. Yes. But if you didn't get it, even if I preach for the next one hour, you still will not get it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let me just top it up. Benefits of submission. We started it last, last week, right? And we said that the first benefit of being under authority is that you are removed from the class of rebels. Amen. Amen. You are removed from the class of what? And we saw Jacob and Laban, how he submitted, even though Laban was very harsh. And God blessed, God blessed, God blessed Jacob. We saw the story of Hagar, Hagar and Sarah. Even though Sarah was very harsh, but God said, go and submit. And in submission, she was blessed. Praise the Lord. And we saw the case of Joseph. He submitted to Potiphar. The wife was wicked and mean to him. But he obeyed. Praise the Lord. And so jo Joseph was blessed by God. What does that tell us? It tells us that no matter the situation you find yourself, obeying the word of God is the most important thing in your life. You see, the word of God will bless you even when man does not want to bless you. Laban didn't want to bless Jacob, but Jacob obeyed God. And in obeying God, and in obeying God, God blessed. God blessed Jacob. And I want you to know in the same way. You see, your submission can determine your tomorrow. I know some Christians, they pray well, they fast well. And you can't say there is any sin in their life. They are faithful in serving God. But things don't work in their life. You know why? Even though they are obedient, generally speaking, but they are not submissive. They are not under authority. And the moment you are not under authority, oh, problems will come into your life. Amen? Problems will come to The moment you are not under authority, you will have problems. It doesn't require devil for it to happen. No. You need to understand that the life of a Christian is prescribed already. Do you understand? 
if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land it didn't say if you pray and fast amen now it didn't say if you are obedient many people are obedient and especially listen especially in the area of marriage many wives are obedient but they are not willing you need to get this right obedience and willing and obedient are two different things willing and obedient is what submission is obedience is not submission you can obey and murmur and complain isn't it that is not willing obedience you can obey and complain that is not what submission is submission is looking unto jesus in obedience and willingly submitting we are looking at jesus whatever happens god will remember me god will remember me it is that place that we find it difficult we find it difficult to come to that place because you see the moment you want to come under submission the devil will attack you because the devil knows any christian that is under authority will make it will be a success praise the lord job 22 21 says submit to god and be at peace with him he said in this way prosperity will come to you job 22 21 niv submit to god and be at peace with him in this way prosperity will come to you in this way prosperity will come to you the only time the word of god allows you not to be submissive not to be obedient the only time is when that authority causes you to sin against god any authority that causes you to sin against god the word of God makes it clear you are not to submit to that authority. Even your husband, even your wife, when he or she brings you to a point of compromise of your faith, the word of God demands that you lovingly reject and rebuke that. Praise the Lord. For instance, when your husband starts telling you you can't go to church until when he asks you to go, you are not to obey that instruction. Oh yes, you are not to obey it. Amen. When your husband tells you, I am your head, the Bible said, wives obey your husband. No, 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 no. You are only one flesh. In the spirit, every man's race is personal. Nobody will go to heaven as husband and wife. Nobody will go to hell as husband and wife. Every man have their own eternity. Are you hearing me? And that is why it is important before you marry, make sure the person you are marrying have a godly authority over her, over him. Amen. The man that wants to marry you, ask him, please, who is it that can stop you in your life? Who is it that when he speaks, you will stop? I need to know. And when he says nobody, find another husband. Hello? A man without a stopper is dangerous. For your sake, find somebody. And when he said so, so, so person, go and find from that person if it's true. Are you hearing me? There is a reason, very simple reason, many Christians are suffering. Are suffering. Amen. Amen. And there is no greater reason why they suffer as in the area of rebellion and transgression. What is transgression? Transgression is going contrary to the law, contrary to the command. I want to read something for you that will change you this morning. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 31 
13 verse 15. We all know the scriptures and everybody quotes it, but I want to drive it home to us this morning when we talk about the benefits of submission. Proverbs 13, 15. Are we there? Proverbs 13, 15. Why is it not projected? He says, good understanding giveth favor. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He didn't say good prayer and good fasting. Are you with me? He says, good understanding giveth what? Favor. But the way of transgressors is hard. Ah. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgression is ha. Huh, one of my sons suffered so much, and now he said, It is not hard, it is very hard. Amen. Amen. He suffered so much affliction, he changed the scripture to himself. He says, The way of the transgressor is very hard. A transgressor is the one not under authority, simple. You will have a hard life. You will have a hard way. Things that happen easily to people will happen difficultly with you. Things people do with ease with you is a struggle. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Some people find it difficult to receive blessings from people. Ask yourself, why? There are people it is difficult to bless them. I'm telling you. There are people I have proposed to bless, but to bless them is a struggle, even for me as a pastor. Amen. Amen. I propose to bless them, but the power and the grace to do it is lacking. The Bible says it is the Spirit of God that worketh in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. To will may be present with you, but the ability to do may not be present. And there is a way you live your life that when people want to bless you, the willingness is there, the intention is there, but the grace to carry it out. It's not there. You know, God seeing your heart. God seeing your way. He says he gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. Even when blessings is to come to you. There are people I have proposed to bless with a certain amount. Eventually when I wanted to do it, it came less than half the amount. I don't know why. I can't explain it. I have said in my heart I want to bless with such so, so, so amount. When I eventually I get to do it, I was only able to do less than half of that. That's what my spirit released. And I look, I say, ah! If only the person knows. And meanwhile, you will get the half. And you still be saying, ah, thank you, pastor. Thank you, pastor. Thank you, pastor. If only you know. If only you know what, what you got. It's not what you be. Praise the Lord. It was like a story of two people. One wanted to sell the other. Amen. And they were friends. And then the other one said, I'm not going to sell below the amount. Even though it's my friend, I will make sure I drive a hard bargain. And the other one said, because it's my friend, I'm going to be liberal in buying. You see, two different positions, but friends. And so when they met, this one says, listen, for example, $20, take it or leave it. Uh, that one said, I thought we are friends. With he said, no, 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 no. I don't mix business with friendship. And so he canceled the purpose of the other one to be liberal. Are you hearing me? By his word, he canceled the purpose. The other one wanted to believe that because it's his phone. And this one says, in business, I don't mix friendship. And then his friend said, what about $15? He said, I told you, $20. Okay, okay. Because of you, 
because of you. Because of you, pay 18. And the first said, 18. He paid him $18. And then they did the transaction and they left. Few days later, he told some friends, some friends, that he made good profit to. That he sold this thing to his friend for $18. That actually, if his friend has pressed more, he could have sold it for 15 Are you hearing me? He said if his friend has pressed more, he could have sold it for 15 And so they went and told the one that bought it 18 He said, the guy cheated you. Do you know that he actually went to sell that in 15 But because you didn't price well, you bought it 18 And then the other one said to them, you know what? I wanted to pay $50, but because he said in business there's no friendship, then I only ended up paying less than half of what I wanted to pay. He said, so for me, who lost? Are you hearing me? Think again, what you call benefit, uh, what you are talking about as benefit, maybe somebody else reject. And so you have not gotten, you have not gotten to the fullness of the blessings. That's my point. Submission brings you to the fullness of the blessings. A cousin of mine came to me one time. He came from the east. He needed help. And when I was told that he was coming, I was preparing myself to bless him, to help him. Do you understand how this does work? Listen, the heart of man is in the hand of God. If God is going to talk to somebody to bless you, you have to please God first, not the man that's going to bless you. You can see somebody you have never met before bless you beyond your imagination because before you got there, God told him what to do for you. And this guy was coming out the way to see me. And so when he arrived the following day, he came. And then it was, you know, one of our also cousins that brought him. And so three of us, we were talking. I asked him, how is things? He said, oh, things are not going well. That that's why he's here. I said, oh, that's why you are. I said, what is the problem? He said to me, this is going back some years ago. Now, some years ago. He said, he's just looking for 100,000. 100,000 to restart his business. 100,000. And that's what he's looking for. And if he can get it, then he will be okay. I said, 100,000. Okay. I said, I will give you 70K. Then the cousin that brought him, because I know that one will do something. That one said he will do 30. He was happy. He jumped up. He thanked me. He thanked uh, uh, cousin, cousin. He was, hey, he was jumping. He was just disturbing everywhere. And I was looking at him. Praise the Lord. And so he ate, we chatted, he left. When he left, I was sad. Because I had prepared my mind to bless him with 250,000. That's why he didn't know. Amen. Amen. And I didn't want him to be mad. I gave him 250. <laughs> Amen. If you give a man what he cannot handle, you may kill him. Praise the Lord. Even when your father decides to bless you, it is still God that decides how much. Even when your brother decides to bless you, it is still God that gives the amount or the way. Praise the Lord. So when you don't look up to God and you are looking up to man, you limit yourself. At the end of the day, the heart of your brother is in the hand of God. Whether he is wicked or nice, his heart is not in his hand. It's in the heart of God. And God is able to direct the heart of any man to favor you. When you please God, it is written, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A woman that chose to be submitted to the husband, no matter how they mock her.
her, no matter how they deride her, how they laugh at her, you know, at the end of the day, she will come out on top. Check the scriptures. Check the scriptures. Don't behave like the world. Somebody, your husband died, you become a widow, and then you start singing the song, I am a widow, I don't have any helper, nobody to help me, and you are destroying tomorrow. Your husband may have died, your tomorrow didn't die. Before your husband came, were you not alive? No, what? were you not alive? You were alive. And if for any reason he goes to be with the Lord, do what? Don't stop. Get ready to serve the Lord. Are you confused? Read Luke chapter 2. The Bible talks about a lady, Anna. She was 84 years old. Luke chapter 2. The Bible says when they came to dedicate Jesus, 84, she only lived with the husband for seven years. Seven years. The Bible said she was praising the God, praising the Lord in prayer and in fasting. And when she heard that Jesus had been brought into the temple, the Bible says she quickly came. Do you understand? She came and began to prophesy. She was 84. Anna, the Bible said, did not leave the temple. You want me to show you that? Luke chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Also, don't, don't say because you are a widow or a widower, everything has crashed in your life. No! No! You are the one crashing your life. You are the one crashing your destiny. You are the one that used to be a victim. Didn't God know you will leave when your husband went to be with the Lord? Let's read. Luke chapter 2 verse 36. Are we there? Yes, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phenuel, of the tribe of Asam. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years she was married only. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. That's 84 years. Which departed not from the temple. She didn't leave the church. She lived in the church. But served God. She served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Is that in your Bible? That's why her name is here. She was a widow. A widow. But she served God day and night. She didn't depart from the temple. She became a prophetess. She was not a prophetess when she was married. She became a prophetess after the husband went. And she gave herself to serve the Lord. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? It is in the word. And she coming in that instance, she gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Can you imagine? This woman went out prophesying and evangelizing at the age of 84. At the age of 84, you are 60 and you have retired yourself. It's been 20 years since I lost my husband. So, 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 do you know why God let your husband go home? So that you can become a prophetess. What did you do? You choose to become something else. You complain and you mourn. It's in the Bible. Go and read it. You are single. You are single. And then you are complaining. If only you have one husband, you are left with. Go and read Acts of the Apostles. A man that had seven virgins and they were all prophetess. Oh! Serving the Lord. What's your excuse? The world is your excuse. If only I have this. Listen, do you know what it means to submit unto the Lord? In every situation, you are comfortable. That's what it means to be submission, to be submissive. 
in if they change listen Laban changed the wage of Jacob 20 times and Jacob didn't beg bread you are on they only change your wage one time everybody has had it can you imagine he reduced my salary God will punish him and funny enough we go to the same church my God will judge him thunder will fire him you are a Christian you are speaking these things and God is so amazed at you, shocked at you, that you, being a Christian, can bless and curse at the same time. You speak curses. You speak blessings. Which one should God listen to? No, which one should God listen to? Praise the Lord. Please. A man that is under God cannot be under the rain. A man that is under God cannot be under the sun. A man under God cannot be under curses. When you are under God, nothing by any means shall touch you. Do you understand that to be in Christ is to be under a bubble? You are like under a bubble. You are untouchable. Amen. In Egypt, in the same country, there were ten plagues. Not one touched the Israelites in the same country. And there was no war. There was no war. There was no war. Praise the Lord. They were in Goshen. And it was in Egypt. And oh, when the water turned red, the water in Goshen was pure. How do you explain it? It may be red in Egypt. When it flows across the border into Goshen, it will be filled hard. The blood will stay back. The pure water will come to Goshen. Are you hearing me? It is you that have lost faith in God. No, you are the one that has lost faith in God. God has not lost faith in you. The benefit of submission to God is prosperity that comes from God. No man can take it away. It's like anybody coming and say that I will be a poor man. How now? Now what power do you have to make me poor? Praise the Lord. What power? Let me tell you the truth too. Left for man, I would have been a poor man, a beggar. Left for man, I would be a beggar. By all accounts, I would have been a beggar. But man is not God. Man will never be God. The man can talk, but God will act. The problem is, where are you? Where are you? Submit yourself to God that it may be well with you. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son came to his father and said, Father, I'm tired of waiting for you to die. He didn't say it like that actually. He said, since you refuse to die, give me my own things. I want to go and live my life. I'm tired of serving you. The Bible said the father didn't argue. The father divided his portion of his estate and gave to him. He took it. He took it. He was happy. He's rich. And the Bible said after some few days, he carried everything the father gave him and went on a far country. He doesn't want to have anything to do with the family. Let me tell you, whatever you run away with can dry, will dry. There is no amount of stolen goods that will last forever. But the one that is connected to the source will always have enough. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. You took 10 million and you ran away with it. It will run out from you. It must run out from you. And then the Bible says, after he has spent all, hunger came, hunger wired him. He was wishing that he can eat the food given to pig, but nobody gave to him. Do you understand? One translation said that he hired himself out. You know when he said, I'm looking for a job. And then nobody employed you. He said, please, job, come and take me. That's what it means. Nobody hired him. So he, job, he was begging, job, come and take me. And so somebody had mercy and took him and told him to feed the pigs. No salary, no food, just go and feed my pig. 
The Bible said while he was doing that, he remembered. He said in my father's house. Listen, he didn't miss the family. He didn't miss the father. The Bible didn't say so. He missed food in his father's house. He said, let me go back to my father's house and be a servant. Rebels only care about themselves. Rebels always talk about themselves. I know what I can do. I know who I am. I can do that. And they fill their life with I, 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 and God say, you will be nothing. Because every I is equal to zero. Are you hearing me? Submit yourself. Be under authority. It may be disgracing. People may laugh at you. You are always obeying. You are not. Check their life and check your life. At the end, we will see. Praise the Lord. When the prodigal son came back, the Bible said that the father threw a party. Amen. The father threw a party. And the brother that went to work, work was coming back home and had music and dancing. It has not happened in that family for a long time. He called the servant, please, what is happening? He said, your brother has <laughs> come back and your father has threw a party. He said, what? You mean my father will throw a party for that prodigal son? He said, I'm not going to join that party. I'm not going to join there. Me? After what he has done? Listen. Luke 15, verse 31. When he will not go inside, the father has to come outside. Submission gives you dominion. Submission gives you liberty. Are you hearing me? He wouldn't come in. The father has to go and look for him. But the prodigal son was lost, but the father never went to look for him. That is a big difference. God will always look for those that look for him. Amen? In Luke chapter 15, verse 31, the father came out. The father said to him, my son, my son, the father said, you are always with me. Ah, you are always with me. Submitted people are always under authority. They are always present. You know where they are always. Praise the Lord. He said, my son, the father said, you are always with me. And everything I have, say everything. 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 I have is yours. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the end result of submission. That is the end. Everything the Father has comes to your command and control. Praise the Lord. Remember Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Because of his obedience, God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know about you. Are you not tired of suffering? No. Are you not tired of suffering? You know who you are. Who are you? Okay. You are a graduate. So what? So what? You are a graduate. So what? You know? So what? You are a graduate. Apart from being a graduate, what else can you do? You said uh, you studied English and you can correct anybody's English. What about correcting your wallet? Are you hearing me? You are an engineer. We are not disputing it. How much have you engineered your finances? Hello? You are an architect. How much skyscraper have you built with your finances? Isn't it time that you fold your certificate under and go under on authority to learn? They taught you how to build, but they didn't tell you how to make money in school. Do you think that if your professor was a millionaire, he would be a teacher? Hello? Are you hearing me? Think about it. Why does he say his hand out? Do I have a witness here? Why does he say his hand out? Because he wants you to hand in your cash. Be wise. Be 
be wise. Somebody went to a business seminar and an executive was teaching in that seminar. And the man taught some principles. It was Pastor Chris that taught us this. And the man taught some principles about how to make money. And then this graduate, this smart guy in the crowd, lifted up his hand and said, Sir, I disagree with you. He said, Why do you disagree with you? He said, My able professor in the university taught us contrary to what you are teaching us here. And and the teachers paused for a moment and let him finish his grammar. When he finished, the executive asked him, you are a professor. Is he a millionaire in dollars? He said, oh, no, 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 no. He's just a lecturer. He said, then shut up and sit down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blackboard and boardroom are not the same. <laughs> are you hearing me? The board is black. The other one is boardroom. Submission gives you revelation. If you hide under somebody and you don't make noise, you'll be able to learn how that person makes his moves to make money. At the end of the day, submission blesses you. Check those that have been under authority in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, they were all blessed. They all prospered. You will not find a poor man in the Bible. A poor man that was under authority. You, you are just a shop assistant. You will sell 10 naira. You will give your boss three naira, five, seven naira and take three. And meanwhile, it's your destiny you are chopping. In church, you are forbidden in prayer. If you give prayer point, demons will start shaking. Are you hearing me? When they call you to pray, demons will be afraid. But for you to have financial dominion is impossible. You know why? You burnt your finger. You are a Christian. You sell in the shop. All the things in your shop is fake, except you. <laughs> that's, if you that's if you are real. Praise the Lord. Everything in your shop is fake. You have, you sell five tomatoes. You put three good ones in front. You put two spoiled ones at the back. You are a Christian. And in that shop, you came and said, Lord, bring customers from the north to the south, from the east to the west. They must come to my shop. I am a royal priesthood. I am a chosen generation. Today, today, pastor said, this week, this is my week. I'm calling them for gospelology. Must be a liar. Are you hearing me? Your neighbor that is blowing powder from a native doctor. The native doctor told him, when you blow it, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. He will obey. You, you are told, do this, do this, do this. You went, you said it doesn't matter. You forgot. You forgot. Whatever native doctor ties, it is in the pronouncement. Are you hearing me? Whatever prophecy pastor gives to you is in the word of God. If you don't follow the word, it will not work. You sell peanuts. You developed a strategy. Good ones in, on the outside. Dirty ones in the middle. Buy good peanuts. And people buy it. When they pour it out, they will curse you. Do you understand? Do you understand? God will not bless fraud. Forget Nigeria. Nigeria is not your problem. You are the problem of Nigeria. You are selling pure water, but you yourself know that that water is not pure. You know where you got the water from. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? That is why John said, if you repent, if you are born again, bring the fruit of repentance. Change the way you do things. Change it. Don't come to church for God to prosper you when you are a crook. First, come to church and repent, and then God will bless you. You are 18. You are Yahoo. You are Yahoo. Go and learn a job. No, you are doing Yahoo. You want to defraud others. 
and then you come to church. You come to church. And then, instead of you repenting, you are hardened. You came, you, la you wrote down prayer point. You wrote, what you do? Monday, you put on your computer, the words of the Gentiles are mine. So pastor said, the words of transfer. Lord, transfer their money to my account. Are you a fool? Praise the Lord. I beg you. Peter said to them in Acts chapter 2, he said, repent. Repent of your wicked ways. Ezekiel 33, God said, turn from your wicked way and live. Turn from your wickedness. And is it not better when you sell tomatoes that are good tomatoes? And then when you come out in the morning, say, Lord, I have the best tomatoes. Bring the best customers to me. Your neighbor may have 10 customers. It doesn't matter. God can bring two customers. The 10 customers can spend 5,000 with him. Two customers will spend 10K with you. Which one do you prefer? No, which one do you prefer? And before you say, Pastor, you are talking, you don't know business. Come, let me educate you about business. Shout hallelujah. Say quality. That's what God likes. Say quality. That's what God likes. Somebody saw the seed of a, a luxurious boss. A luxurious boss in Christ's embassy when we were there. Big boss because we, Pastor and us, we need a boss to carry people from car park to church. So this guy, I don't know where he got it from. The first day on Sunday, the, the boss was supposed to carry people from car park to the church. He broke down on the way the first day. They fixed and fixed and fixed. He keep breaking down. And the thing was so big. Finally, the pastor came on the pulpit. He said, please, whoever that bless us, whoever that bless us with that boss, please come and carry it back. We are tired. <laughs> and you know, pastor can be very gentle. He said, please, come and carry it. We are tired. Come and carry it. Praise the Lord. You know that your car is push and drive. And you have suffered many things in the hand of that car. And you said to show it as a seed to pastor. What? <laughs> Is that a wickedness? You brought it. You washed it. Polished the inside. Polished everywhere. You said, Pastor, I want to show a seed. And pastor prayed for you. Ah! He said, my suffering has ended. Not knowing that you are transferring your own suffering to pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then pastor dressed up Monday morning. He wants to go for his appointment. He said, come, let's go drive the car. God bless bro Chukudi. He said, drive. It won't start. They use three batteries, it won't start. They call mechanic, it won't start. What do you think that will happen? Is it not better for you to sell it anywhere? Anywhere. If the car is worth 10,000, bring that 10,000 as a seat on the altar than to deceive your pastor. I can tell you many things that are worrying Christians that has nothing to do with the devil. But when you behave like a devil, devil will come after you. Praise the Lord. Submission is to follow God's word, to follow God's command. Whatever you do, make sure it is the best. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, one day when you come into this church, you'll be feeling cold. No matter how hot it is, outside, because the air condition will be so much. It wasn't like this from the beginning. Huh? Now, people watch our video, they are happy. There were days when we started like, preaching that that we'll be preaching, power will just go, pew. You will hear the voice, we'll see no picture. In this place, in this auditorium. Amen. Sometimes the camera we're using, the, God bless that camera. Sometimes we just off itself. The camera. I'm telling you that, but if you hold on to the vision, it will come to pass. 
Amen. Amen. Please, we have other things to do today. We have a, a marriage to bless. Shout hallelujah. But, but I will not close this message without calling those that wants to make it right with God. I have given a lot of examples. You know, I started with your heart. Where is your heart? Have you given God your heart? That is the beginning of everything. If you have not given God your heart, you will be crooked in everything you do. And I want to invite you, if you are here, and you are not born again, or you are in the micro church, or online, you know you are not born again. You know the way you think. You know the way business means to you. I want to give you an opportunity, please. If you are here and you are not born again, I would like to get you born again so that a newness will begin in your life. If you want to give your life to Jesus, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, just lift up your hand wherever you are. This is what you must do before you can enjoy the benefits of submission. If you don't submit to Christ, you will not enjoy any benefit. If you are here, you are not born again, and you know your heart is not with Jesus, raise your hand. It won't take long. You will be born again today. And that will be the greatest miracle that will happen in your life, to be born again. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Please, please. Don't ignore this altar call. Because at the end of the day, that is what makes the difference between life and death. Please stand on your feet wherever you are. Please stand on your feet. Jesus said, except a man be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said it. Believe Jesus. Believe his word. Except a man be born again. Please. Please. There are still some of you hesitating, thinking... What will people say? Let me tell you, the same people, when God begins to bless you, the same people will come and rejoice with you. Is it not better for God to bless you? Is it not better if you are here, just from wherever you are, just stand on your feet. I'm pleading with you this morning. Accept Jesus into your life. Open your heart for Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If I have to beg you, I'm begging you. Because to die without Christ is to go to hell. Ah, it's hell on earth and hell after. Why would you like to suffer? God said, why would you like to die? This morning, this morning, take a step for Jesus. I'm not just talking about those that are not born again. I'm talking about those their heart is not in Christ. Ah, Give your heart to Jesus this morning. You know what it means for your heart to be with Jesus? It means that he is the first in your life. It means that anything that concerns the kingdom of God comes first in your life. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please, even if you are online, wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I confess my sins before you. Lord, I have sinned against you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my lawlessness. Today, your word has ministered to me. And I am here to give my life, to give my heart to Jesus, to make him the Lord and Savior over my life. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon me. Save me from my sin. Save me from the wicked one. From today, Lord, I want to be in your family. I believe with all my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for my sin. That Jesus is the Son of God. And from today, he is Lord 
over my life and I hand over my life and my heart unto him from this day. Lord Jesus, take control. Have dominion in me. Rule in me. Direct me every day of my life till the end. Praise God. Praise God. Father, I pray for all those that are standing, those online, those in the micro church. Lord, accept them by the blood. Lord, cleanse them by the blood. Lord, establish them by the blood of Jesus. Lord, settle them in your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. Fill them with your spirit, Lord, I pray. Give them the gift of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I welcome, I welcome them to your family. Into your family, oh God. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. You are born again today. Shout hallelujah somebody. Shout hallelujah somebody.